Here's a recent case relating to complaints, position papers, and the allegations therein. Bernea v. Security Trading Corp. On September 25, 2014, the employee resorted to a single entry approach or SENA before the Regional Conciliation and Mediation Board NCR for illegal dismissal and non-payment of separation pay and labor standard law benefits. The SENA request was, however, deemed closed and terminated because of the employee's filing of a similar complaint before the NLRC against his employer for money claims. Record shows that although the employee included a claim for separation pay in the causes of action in the NLRC complaint, he failed to include therein a cause of action for illegal dismissal. The employee's position paper still revealed that he specifically argued for the illegality of his dismissal from employment, as well as his entitlement to separation pay, among others. However, the labor tribunals and the Court of Appeals refused to resolve the issues on illegal dismissal and the money claims concomitant thereto, such as separation pay, damages, and attorney's fees. Particularly, they ruled that since these money claims arose from a finding of illegal dismissal and the latter was not among the causes of action listed in the employee's NLRC complaint, they were precluded from passing on the issue of illegal dismissal under Section 12, Rule 5 of the 2011 NLRC Rules of Procedure as amended. Were the labor tribunals and the CA correct in not passing on the issue of illegal dismissal? The Supreme Court ruled that the labor tribunals and the CA were not correct. They should have addressed the issue of illegal dismissal. Section 12C and D, Rule 5 of the 2011 NLRC Rules of Procedure as amended, govern the rules on submission of position papers and replies before the NLRC. Such provisions read, the position papers of the parties shall cover only those claims and causes of action stated in the complaint or amended complaint, accompanied by all supporting documents, including the affidavits of witnesses, which shall take the place of their direct testimony, excluding those that may have been amicably settled. Within 10 days from receipt of the position paper of the adverse party, a reply may be filed on a date agreed upon and during the schedule set before the labor arbiter. The reply shall not allege and or prove facts and any causes of action not referred to or included in the original or amended complaint or petition or raised in the position paper. The court stated that subparagraph C purportedly limits the coverage of the position papers of the parties to only those claims and causes of action stated in the complaint or amended complaint, whereas subparagraph D directs that the reply shall only allege and prove facts and causes of action in the original or amended complaint or in the position paper. The court took judicial notice of the fact that initiatory complaints filed before the NLRC are just blank forms wherein the employee complainant simply inputs his or her details, the respondent's details, and ticks off a checklist of causes of action which are applicable to him or her. The court stated that it is only upon the filing of position papers that the complainant is able to expound on the employer's acts or omissions which constitute his or her causes of action against the latter. According to the court, it is only reasonable to infer that notwithstanding the aforementioned provision, the complaint could not be the sole basis in determining the complainant's causes of action, given that it is in the position paper that the ultimate facts are presented and established by the submission of all relevant documents and affidavits to support the same and prove their respective causes of action. Otherwise stated, the filing of the position paper and not the mere complaint, should be the operative act that forecloses the raising of matters constitutive of the employee complainant's causes of action. The court added that it is for this reason why subparagraph D of Section 12, Rule 5 of the 2011 NLRC Rules allows the replies to discuss matters not only covered by the complaint or amended complaint, but also those covered by the position papers. Such interpretation, the court said, is in accord with a settled norm that in labor cases, rules of procedure should not be applied in a very rigid and technical sense, and that labor officials should use all reasonable means to ascertain the facts, in each case speedily and objectively, without regard to technicalities of law and procedure in the interest of due process. In this case, the court found that the employee initially filed a SENA request which included illegal dismissal and the concomitant claim of separation pay as his causes of action. His SENA request was, however, deemed closed and terminated when he filed his NLRC complaint, 
which, while including separation pay as among the causes of action indicated therein, did not include illegal dismissal. Nonetheless, the employee went ahead and presented arguments supporting his claim for illegal dismissal in his position paper. For the court, the employee never intended to remove his cause of action for illegal dismissal when he essentially refiled his SENA complaint as his NLRC complaint. The court accordingly resolved the issue of illegal dismissal.